Hi everybody, welcome to today's KBS G Plus Hangout. We are now 67 days out from the show and it's very exciting. Plans are getting very firm and very finalized. One of our initiatives this year, our new initiatives, is KBIS Next and that's an initiative that's taking place in the South Hall at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Today we're going to talk about one aspect of KBIS Next and that's what's happening on the KBIS Next stage. And today we uh, very cool, cool programming. We're going to talk about that today. That's our topic. But we're also lucky enough to have two of the speakers on the KBIS stage with us today on the Hangout. Uh, with me, as always, is my co-host, Brian Pagel, Vice President of the Kitchen and Bath Group for Emerald Expositions. And with us, we have Richard Eneskevich, and he's a CKD, and he's Executive Director of the Kitchen and Bath Division for Alt Breeding Schwartz Architects in Annapolis, and uh, Richard is a graduate of Virginia Tech's um, NKBA accredited residential design program and was our, in our inaugural um, 30 under 30 group uh, two years ago. So that's fantastic. And Richard, I hear this is a very exciting time for you. Not only are you one of the uh, voices from the industry speakers, but um, you're also launching a new, a new blog yourself. Yes, thank you so much, Leanne. I am very excited to be presenting Fashion Forward Thinking on January 20th at 12.30 p.m., as well as launching my brand new lifestyle design blog called Richer Living. That's R-I-C-H-A-R, living.com. So you can go online and get a quick sneak peek of that as we prepare to launch right before the show. So it's a very busy but uh, very exciting time. Great. Well, congratulations on all those uh, new things that are happening, Richard. That's awesome. Also with us today is Eric Engad. He's a celebrated author, digital expert. This is a long list. Uh, SEO guru, speaker, entrepreneur, and also, of course, the founder and CEO of Stone Temple, Con Stone Temple Consulting. Eric, we're really, really happy you could join us today. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, well, the chat today, but also... Uh, uh, the event in January in Las Vegas, I think it's going to be a great time. Perfect. Okay, Brian, before we get into some of the programming and, and some of the uh, the neat stuff that's happening on the KBIS Next stage, can you just uh, set the background, um, kind of what the stage is about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've been working as a group on KBIS Next for almost a year at this point. Um, and it, it really you know, was developed out of the, the idea of trying to present innovative and different thoughts in our industry. And of course, within this space in South Hall, there's going to be the stage, uh, the, the uh, tech bar, the future house, uh, future kitchen uh, presented by Virginia Tech, um, as well as a variety of other things. So we've got three full days of presentations. Um, each day there will be three sessions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, um, and one at, uh, at lunchtime as well. Uh, and I believe, well, actually the two gentlemen that we have here today are going to be kicking us off on day one, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. Yes, it did work out that way, that you're, the, uh, you're both the first two presentations of the show, so that's pretty cool. No pressure. Um, so the morning presentation, uh, which Richard is a part of, is uh, at 9.30. It's entitled The Modern Family. Designing for multi-generational living, and participating on this panel is a is an incredible list. There's Mitzi Beach, who's a boomer lifestyle expert. Uh, there's interior designer Brittany Gardner, who's a CKD as well, RID, and I believe she was 30 under 30 last year, or was she in your group, Richard? 2014. Yeah, 2014. We have Lori March. Um, any HGTV fans out there? Lori is a HGTV interior designer. And we also have Ken Roll on this panel, who's the chairman and founder of Roll. Um, so what a fabulous lineup! And uh, Richard, can you touch a, a little bit about what the uh, what the Modern Family panel will be discussing? Certainly. Um, and first off, I have to agree with you on what an amazing panel we have here. Um, it is. Uh, very excited to be a part of it and I'm honored to be standing with such great uh, successful and talented people. Uh, we all are not only just representing different areas in the industry and different experiences but also uh, different stages of life which couldn't be more fitting to the topic. So I think that's going to bring a really uh, powerful and unique perspective to the stage. And we're really going to dive into the uh, idea of what is the modern family today and what does that mean exactly. 
We know that it is not easily defined any longer. We know that it is much more dynamic than ever before. Uh, statistics and demographics have shown that we live differently than yesterday. So this is a very imperative and important topic for our industry uh, to talk about. So we're all really excited about it. Yeah, there's just so many, so many situations now um, uh, in, in terms of what, what comprises the modern family. I, I remember when I was younger, they said the average family was 2.2 kids and a mom and dad, and I could never quite figure, as a third child, I could never quite figure out that statistic, but uh, that's, what, that's what they used to say. So there, there's things like boomers, um, parents coming back to live with them. There's families with three generations under a roof. There's... Um, there's divorced parents who share custody. There's so many different situations that, uh, that and I, I can't wait for you, um, your panel, to talk about that. So, so many things to think about. Now, Richard, you're a young designer and you have incredible experience. Um, what areas would you say are your personal areas of interest and what can we expect from, from you at the panel? Sure. Well, I can't give away too much, but I will uh, say this that. Uh, this topic is something that I very easily can relate to and it's something that is very near and dear to me given the fact that my grandparents moved in with my parents when I was in high school. So I did live in a multi-generational uh, uh, home and um, the idea that I would really uh, like to discuss and dive a lot deeper into is this idea of independence in a multi-generational um, home and how do you maintain and respect that so I would love to expand on that further but you're gonna just have to come to the presentation at 9:30 a.m. on January 20th and hear more about it I think that's a great idea and as I said that um, when I saw the lineup of the panel I thought wow this is gonna be a great discussion so okay um, once Richard went over the timing 9:30 on day one um, our lunchtime presentation um, following Richard's panel is Eric. And now, Eric, I, you first came on my radar when I was talking to a few uh, digital experts in the kitchen and bath world, and every time SEO was mentioned or digital experience, I heard your name. And uh, I was wondering, uh, who is this guy about? Um, so you've been an expert in SEO, and we were just talking about this before, um, since 2002, before I even knew what the term is, and as we know, I'm, you know, not overly young. Um, so does that make you a bit of a, of a pioneer in this area? I, well, I, I've certainly been involved from the pretty early days. And truth be told, there's some people who, uh, you know, got in before I did. But yeah, I'm, I'm, an, uh, I'm a long timer. We can say that fairly. And, uh, and uh, you know, I hope that I've been able to help the industry grow and mature. That's certainly uh, my passion. But, you know, thinking about uh, just for the people who are watching this and people who will be at the, the KBIS show, uh, how they should be thinking about SEO and why it's important to them. Uh, the, the first thing to realize is that if you have a website, uh, you probably want to get traffic from search engines like Google. And if you've done any reading, you'll probably be aware that traffic from a search engine is the best converting traffic that you're going to get other than uh, people who already know you. And, and so it's your best way to build your business through your website. And it's not, unfortunately, a straightforward and simple thing to do. Uh, the, the problem is that people build websites, humans build websites for humans to consume. And then Google will use a software program called a spider or a robot, we use either name, to come to your site and try to understand it but it's nowhere near as smart as a human. So it makes simplifying assumptions and it can't read the page the way you do. And where SEO comes in is how do we take somebody's website, some business website, uh, and get it to a point where the search engine can understand what it's about. And that's really what's at the heart of, uh, of uh, search engine optimization, is making the website more understandable uh, to the search engines. Okay, great way to explain it. Um, that, and I like to hear you say that humans are actually maybe a little bit smarter than <laughs> than a computer at some point. That's always good to hear. Um, now, I know your expertise is is um, richer than just 
SEO, um, Eric, and I know you give over something like 50 speaking engagements a year. Um, what can we expect, or what can our attendees expect from your presentation on the KBIS Next Stage? Well, what I want to do is I want to try to help simplify this for the audience so they can understand how they should engage with it. Uh, it, it first of all, it's a fascinating thing for me because you can quickly realize by talking to me that I'm a tech geek, right? And now I'm going to be in, in a room with a whole bunch of other geeks, but they're a geek in something completely different than my world, right? So they have their thing they know how to do, right? Uh, so I think it's just going to be a fascinating discussion because of that alone. But like I said, what I want to do is I want to simplify it for the people in the audience so they can understand how to engage with SEO and be successful with it. There is a lot of deep technical stuff that goes into the, the niggly little details, but I think we really want to uh, help people understand the basics of what they need to do with their website so it can be structured in a way that will uh, be easily understood by search engines. That's the first piece. And then you alluded to that we do more than just the SEO piece. There's a second component that's also very important, which is going to sound a little bit like a PR kind of campaign, and it is a little bit like a PR campaign. What are the things you do in order to, uh, well, effectively get other people to link to your website? And the reason why we care about that is that uh, there are going to be many people who make products which are identical uh, to yours, whatever business you are in, and are very similar to yours. And Google has no way of telling which one is more important than the other. But they use links to your website kind of like an election system to figure out, help them figure out what the most important product in a given category is. So you have to have a plan to uh, attract links to your site. And we talk about content marketing when we uh, try to get into that. You know, what are the, uh, the things you can do to publish great content which is going to cause people to link to your website? Again, its own topic with a, a certain amount of complexity. But I really want to try to get it to a point where people can understand, OK, now I know why I need to do it, and I've got an idea of how to get started. OK, so this is really interesting, because obviously at the Kitchen and Bath Industry Show, uh, we have two halls full of basically a lot of people who are selling similar products. We have decorative plumbing. We have cabinetry. We have appliances. So I mean, I think exhibitors and manufacturers really need to take note um, from from your discussion on how Google is going to to read their product. So I, I encourage everyone to uh, you know to attend this because it's so important. I for one will be there, Eric. I want to learn from you, so so that's great. <laughs> um, so once again, Eric's presentation is day one. It's at 12:30. So grab your lunch. It's the lunchtime presentation on January 20th. 20th. Grab your lunch and come over to the KBIS next stage. And rounding out day one, the afternoon presentation at 3.30 is going to be by our media partner, Modanus. Uh, Veronica Miller, the CEO of Modanus, will be uh, moderating a panel about design around the world. And we've been very busy, you know, watching what's happening at other, other, other trade shows internationally, watching design um, all around the world. We're going to have representatives from different countries there, um, both designers and, and from the manufacturer side. So please join us in the afternoon um, for that talk. And then, Brian, uh, do you mind doing a quick summary of day two? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll give them a best shot. Um, so we have another th three great sessions. The first is at 1030 in the morning. It's the Innovative Showroom Award Announcement. So this is something that we all know is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, we'll be working with our partners at the Hearst Design Group, who's, again, sponsoring this initiative. Uh, we'll be announcing the winners. Um, and the six categories and, of course, our overall winner. And just you know, we'll talk about it again in a minute. Public voting is taking place as we speak on the Facebook page. And we'll immediately follow up with a discussion on what makes showrooms so unique. Uh, then at 1 o'clock, we have a panel uh, from our partners at KBB, the designer and the builder relationship. So Chelsea Butler, our executive editor, will be uh, uh, moderating this panel discussion with some of our advisory, our editorial advisory board members. And really what we're going to do is talk about how the designer and builder work together and how they can do it more effectively. Um, so there's going to be some real world um, stories that I think we can all benefit from. And we round out the day at 3.30 with another panel hosted by Veronica Modanus. 
and this will be uh, about leveling the playing field. So it's all about how designers can share their success stories from being a brand spokesman. Uh, also looking at how you know manufacturers have successfully partnered with designers uh, very successfully. And then uh, we'll, we'll give a lot of information on how you can really reinvent your business to adapt to the current market uh, that, that we're in. So I think it's uh, going to be a great day uh, and, and just a full of, of great content. Okay, cool. And day three I'll do really quickly, which is January 22nd. Um, we're kicking off the day at 10 a.m. On, on that day um, with a really cool research project that's happening right on the show floor in uh, KBIS, KBIS Next in the South Hall. Um, and that's the Virginia Tech Future House Kitchen. And um, that is happening on the show floor, but at 10 a.m. we're having the discussion led by Joe Wheeler. He's at AIA. He's the professor professor of architecture and the co-director for the Center of Design Research at, at uh, Virginia Tech. So that's going to be a great discussion. Um, then lunchtime, we're just kind of dotting the I's and crossing the T's on that one. That's probably the details are going to be ready this week. And then we're going to end um, the third presentation on day three in a really fun way. Um, we're going to have a fun presentation called The Ultimate Foodie Kitchen. And I think it might be a little bit like a he, she, he said, she said kind of idea. We have a, a kitchen designer. We have Rebecca Rebe Reynolds. Um, she's from the Kitchen Design Network and New Cannon Kitchens. And we have Russ Falk, who's the Vice President of Design and Marketing from Kalamazoo Outdoor, but he's also a chef. I've seen him. I've actually seen Rebecca cook, and I've seen Russ cook in, in an outdoor environment. So I think it's going to be um, fun to, to hear them um, um, discuss uh, the best kitchen for the ultimate foodies. So, Brian, any, any other housekeeping uh, we need to do before we say goodbye today? Yeah, absolutely. A few quick things. First, again, uh, public voting is open as we speak on our Facebook page for the Innovative Showroom Awards. Uh, that goes through tomorrow. Uh, the votes are coming in like, like crazy, so please go on and vote for your favorite. We want to hear from, uh, from the marketplace. Uh, a couple quick notes for our exhibitors. First, uh, tomorrow is the deadline to get your directory listing in, uh, so please go in and update that. And of course, don't don't forget about uh, putting your new products into the KBiz uh, or Best KBiz competition. We're taking submissions now, and then of course, there's the uh, submission process for the Innovative Booth Awards. The deadline for that is January 9th. Uh, so please uh, submit your best. We 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 definitely want to you know show off the best and brightest at KBiz. Great. Okay. So KBIS Next, uh, obviously the stage is really shaping up. It's, um, it's what great content we have that we're presenting all three days of the show. Uh, next week on The Hangout, we are revisiting the Innovative Showroom Awards because we will actually know who the 18 finalists are. So that's very cool. We're going to continue that conversation about showroom excellence. So please join us next Thursday, November 20th. And then the week after, we'll have a break for, the, for Thanksgiving. So... Eric, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Thanks for having me. And Richard, best of luck with, uh, with all of your new programs, and we look forward to not only your voices from the industry session, but uh, your panel discussion and your new blog. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank okay. you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.